Welcome to Voices of Pueblo, brought to you by the Pueblo Star Journal. We are continuing our ongoing La Pura Verdad miniseries with Episode 2, Are You the Man? Check out Episode 1, Introducing the Show, if you missed it. This episode is brought to you by Rocky Mountain Realty, Pueblo's largest independent real estate agency. Rocky Mountain Realty is a locally owned and independently operated company. You can call them at 719-582-6191 or check out their website at rockymountainrealty.biz. The Pueblo Star Journal thanks Rocky Mountain Realty for supporting nonprofit news in Pueblo, Colorado. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed are the speaker's own and do not represent the views, thoughts, and opinions of the Pueblo Star Journal. The material and information presented here is for general information purposes only, and its use does not imply endorsement of or opposition to any specific organization, product, or service by the Pueblo Star Journal or its affiliates. The Pueblo Star Journal name in all forms and abbreviations are the property of its owner who reserves all rights. The content herein is not intended to be a substitute for professional advice in any manner, and the Pueblo Star Journal hereby disclaims all liability arising directly or indirectly from any use of this content. Hola, mi gente. Welcome to our podcast. I'm your host, Angelica Palacios. And I'm your co-host, Ana Palacios. And you are listening to La Pura Verdad. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I love that, that little wand noise. Makes me feel magical. Okay. So, hey, y'all. This is episode number one. one. And today's topic is going to be all about machismo. machismo. Mm-hmm. Like we mentioned before, machismo really is what we think has built, um, you know, the whole structure of this podcast. For sure. It's really what we're basing everything off of. It's like, how how can I, I need like an analogy. I think that's what it's called. You know, like how to build it, to put bricks for a formation. Mm-hmm. You got to put the concrete first mm-hmm. or whatever that's called. Yeah, the and then the bricks. You know, you can clearly tell that we are not <laughs> handsy whatsoever. And our dad literally does foundation for concrete. Well, uh, you guys get it. It's, you got to have a piece of bread before you put the peanut butter in jail. For sure, for sure, girl. You know what I mean? I get you. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get straight into machismo. Let's do it. Um, And sister, before that, and to our lovely, lovely audience, every episode, we want to make clear that these stories and real life experiences are only our own. Please understand that these experiences may be triggering to some, but we're here to talk and relate, y'all. We're not here to judge, girl. What we like to say is judge your mama, okay? We will. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Listen, we're all in this together, so what... What what am I going to do about it, right? This okay. is a safe zone. We're here to give advice. And hopefully, like we said, hopefully our verdad is similar to your, your verdad. verdad. Let's so, get into it, sis. So I want to start off with the... I want to start off with the definition of machismo. Okay. So per dictionary, machismo is strong or aggressive masculine pride. That mm. is what machismo is. Can you give the other definition? I really liked it. Like, I feel like it it gives what we all know what it is. So, according to Rit Edu, period. Okay, in Latin American culture, machismo is a social behavior pattern in which the Latino male exhibits an overbearing attitude to anyone in a position he perceives as inferior to his demanding complete subs what is that word let me see what it was girl subservience subservience listen y'all a lot of big words a lot of big words but nonetheless right kind of gives that it it happens amongst all of us i think that's what i really liked about it was it it gave a certain population you know which we are latinas we are he's hispanas and so um i think it's important to point that out you know Yeah, I think that's important, too. But nonetheless, I guess like a more understanding definition of that would be just like the stronger, aggressive masculine pride. For sure, girl. For sure. You know, just to give a little bit more of a thicker definition. Yeah, like a thicker, (laughs) more, you know, but all, all aside from that, that's what machismo is. So we really want to talk about what 
it looks like in our own home. Mm. And the reason why we feel like that's so important to talk about is because, I mean, where's a better place to get a feel of this but our own house? Girl. And uh, I mean, I'm going to let you I'm going to let you take it away and I'm going to let you start first. Well, um, if you listen to the pilot, I said I was the oldest of four siblings. And so I kind of figured this out from an earlier age. And for me, it was seeing my mom be a stay at home mom while dad went to work. Mm -hmm. And I think that was always so natural for me. Um, I really thought everybody's moms were stay at home moms, even if they had a job, they were stay at home moms. That's what I thought. Right. Yeah. Um, and why? Because growing up, uh, I just saw the women cleaning. I saw the men outside and I saw the women cleaning. Like, I mean, I don't know what else to say, y'all. This is real life. And so, um, and then I think I really had a realization about what machismo was in our home when I got older and I was like okay what would make me the perfect daughter and I'd be like no it's definitely getting an education right like it has to be because that's what dad wants yeah but I know in the back of his head like he also wants us to be good house you know take I I mean I don't know what I no, like that is true. I, I really do think it's like okay have a job be successful but also you know have your part in the home which yeah. is when I was like oh shoot that's true I'm lit like this is my reality and then re- social media kind of brought it to light like oh it's not just me but there's other mm-hmm. yeah sis I don't know okay so just because you brought that conversation up like I don't I don't want to speak for you but how I felt and I don't want this to make me sound like a terrible person but because our father because dad expects us to clean and to take care of the house but we don't it makes like, me let's put not that out there y'all. Do- oh by the can, way can yes, we put that out we- there my mom to this day does not let us clean the house and if she, if we do she'll she'll, she'll come, like, come behind, behind us, us and clean it up again yeah this is facts y'all this is real life so <laughs> it's like it's like from from how my dad sees it like i mean it like whatever that the raw truth the pure truth okay so i'm gonna give it to him we're lazy yeah to him we don't do anything in the house but like and that's a problem for him but if he were to be here because he's not here our our dad works from six in the morning until six o'clock at night maybe even until eight o'clock eight, yeah sometimes. so we really don't get to see our dad Granted, my older Anna's moved out of the house. She's gone. So she really don't see him unless she comes to comes over. Today's episode of Voices of Pueblo is brought to you by Rocky Mountain Realty. Whether you're a first time home buyer, looking to sell, or considering an investment, Rocky Mountain Realty is your local partner in real estate success. You can visit their website at Rocky Mountain Realty.biz, B I Z, or stop by their office at 201 North Main Street in Pueblo to experience the difference for yourself. I don't see him because I'm at school all the time. And if I'm not at school, I'm at work. And if I'm not at work or school, I'm with my friends because, you know, for sure. But so he doesn't see behind the closed doors when we try to help mom. But there's we we just or can't like, or like, we just can't. Or I don't like aside from all that, but the effort we do in our lives separately outside of like what our home is like i have a full-time job i'm a teacher you are a full-time student and work a job like and you're doing research and like there's so many other things that we have outside of home being in this home right. that i think is like interesting and mm-hmm. in a different perspective right something yeah. he doesn't get to see right Ooh, how does having a uh-huh a like, moment. You know, <laughs> moment on the podcast wow and we want to just put really quick that like we you're gonna hear us talk a lot about our dad because you know but he's not a bad person if you really got to meet my dad he's amazing all of our friends love this man like if he is their own dad like he has a big playful he has a big heart i really do think that and you know i'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can relate with us like he really does care about us like he doesn't not love us he loves us but 
it's just it's hard love and he's admitted it before too yeah can i can i step in yeah um we'll get into it in later episodes but really y'all it's all about generational trauma his own he in the way that he was raised Mm -hmm. um very very traditional guy like that's very (laughs) true yeah y'all we'll get into it deep deep into it but just to give like a little like insight to that as well their generational traumas become our generational sure. traumas because it's and I, I i promise we'll get more deep into it when we get into that episode but it affects how we are in our own personal relationships Girl. and that's another thing that we wanted to talk about on this episode is how machismo being like shown in our own lives from a person who we hold very dearly in our heart how does it affect how we in our relationships with other people, how I react with other people. Can I start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, because I just feel like it's so appropriate for me to start. Um, when I say personal relationships, I want to start with friendships with boys. And I think we should do that, right? Start with friendships with boys and then go to relationship and that, you know, mm-hmm. right? Because I was thinking about that. I was like, ooh, friendships with the boys. That's also interesting. Growing up, I was like, if I have a friend who's a boy, he's going to protect me. Mm. that's crazy right that's now true. i'm like i gotta be very cautious about the men that i so or i don't have to be but i am because i'm like they're not these boys aren't gonna protect me you know what i mean i gotta i gotta do this on my own so it's like okay it's a deeper con what i feel like that the friendship one that should be something we add to another conversation because that's that that one's deep right relationship wise i think because dad took on that macho i'm the man like and i didn't like that i never liked that because i was like my mom she got this right like she has this right so i'm like if my mom has it i have to have it so in my only relationship with the boy i was very dominant because i was like Tú no me vas a mandar. Yeah. Yo mando. Yeah. And it should never be like that. You know what I mean? There should never be like who rules the relationship. Who wears the pants? I hate that. Who wears the pants? Who cares? It should never be Why can't be we both that. wear the same pair of pants? Or, right. Right. <laughs> like, me and Tay wear the same size. Like, right? I don't know. I, I think it's very important to mention what happened a couple months ago with you and dad oh about like that really portrays like oh no y'all for real okay uh newsflash to anybody who doesn't know anna is gay um (laughs) i uh have a girlfriend and um that was very new to my dad because i never dated that was one thing right sis you can say you've had one boyfriend had one boyfriend one real boyfriend (laughs) yeah and like even before that i didn't do like petty little relationships right nonetheless right doesn't like it not one bit doesn't like it i think and and that has a lot well this will also come up again in the generational traumas or like just you know if anybody knows in hispanic culture we are not religious but in the hispanic culture religion is very for dad highly but if you really ask him like we're not religious though nah, but like we but, are but like we're not well, like, i think do you get what y'all, i'm saying this is gonna have to be another episode because i have my own observations that is very i think we're gonna have to skip that because girl 15 minutes is not enough for that topic. right sorry guys we only have 15 nonetheless minutes, but, nonetheless but what about you sis really quick get into you relationships I'm, i have a boyfriend right <laughs> We've been together for two years and it's hard It's really hard because I am like how you were with your only male relationship. I am always the dominant one. And what I mean by that is like, I am always like so independent. Like my boyfriend has even told me before, like, just let me take care of you. And I'm like, no, I got this. I got this. I can take care of myself. And sometimes it's like really upsetting because like there are times where like i want to be baby i want to be taken care of and the moment i get the little bit of that i'm like oh this is weird like stop I don't like it, it right anymore. now yeah like i'm like oh no it's like hard. it's okay and it's like it's hard because like it causes problems with you and your significant other and granted i'm super thankful that god has blessed me with the best boyfriend i could ever possibly have and he's so he patient gets, he gets that you come from a crazy he's, old family yeah he's so patient <laughs> with me he literally is just like great but 
it's really hard when you really have to sit down and you have to break those walls down walls down and like be like vulnerable yeah vulnerable like it's super hard but all aside from that girl what do we do to cope yeah what do you do what i want to know what do you do to be like okay i'm i'm not a housewife i i don't have to clean if i don't want to today out can can i go because i have it in the back of my head right now girl yeah go ahead i i have the worst guilt when i'm home and tay's working because being a teacher i'm the girl i'm off the clock all the time okay and i just don't want to clean you know what i mean and i'm like but you need to clean you have to clean because your partner just worked all day and they're going to come home to a dirty house. That's rude. Well, but I'm I like, I think that comes from. Yeah. And I, th- I thought about that and I was like, but girl, it's your day off. You're tired. Have you thought about the fact that your body needs rest? That's how I, you know. Yeah, I think. I don't know how I cope with this. Honestly. And this might be like a shocking response. I don't think I cope, girl. I don't. You're not think gonna I've do it gotten, overnight. I don't think I've gotten to that point where like I have figured out what helps me. Yeah, I think I'm still really struggling with it, and I think it still is really hard for me to like go through. Yeah, those situations when it does happen, I think I just shut down. Well, good for you, sis. That we have our own podcast, aka therapy so we're gonna get through it together y'all <laughs> we're gonna talk about it all right well thank you guys this was our first very episode <laughs> on machismo and this was la pura verdad mm-hmm. the pure truth bye-bye bye Thank you so much for listening to the Voices of Pueblo brought to you by Rocky Mountain Realty. Rocky Mountain Realty invites you to experience the power of community with their local brokers. They have over 40 local real estate agents ready to help you with all of your real estate needs. You can call them at 719-582-6191 or check out their website at rockymountainrealty.biz. That's dot B-I-Z. Thank you so much for listening.